How do I get to the page numbers? Oh, it took you back. It did. Didn't it? I got to go back through the. Yeah. Oh, I probably just couldn't see it because I had my. I, I do have to click on the algebra too, don't I? Yeah. Now it should give me pages. There we go. Yeah. That's the confusing thing or the stupid thing about this website is that it automatically takes you back. Uh huh. Starting. Yeah. Okay. And let's have a look at these. You did the first two, so we want to start on 15 and then 17 through 22. Is that right? Uh, I did 15 today, so started at 17. Okay. Let me increase the size of that a little bit. Okay, end behavior is strictly a function of the highest degree term. So on 17, it, everything to do with that, nothing else. I don't right. care what any of that is. You can cross it off. Right. Okay. So to figure out left hand end behavior, plug in negative infinity for X. To figure out right hand end behavior, plug in positive infinity for X. So when I plug in negative infinity, I get this. And this may not be the way your teacher tells you to do it, just because they don't like you using infinity like a number. But this way works just fine. Okay? Now, what's oh, minus infinity to the fourth power going to be? Minus infinity? Plus infinity. When you take oh. a negative number and you take it to an even power, it becomes positive. If okay. you do minus 4 squared, it's 16 not negative 16. So that part becomes positive infinity. So now I have minus five times infinity. So what, what does H of X do as X goes to negative infinity? Um, it goes to infinity? Negative infinity. That right there is negative infinity. Negative five times infinity is negative infinity. When you have infinity, the only thing that matters is whether it's a positive or a negative. Okay? Okay. Now, let's plug in positive infinity. Let's figure out the right-hand end behavior. So the right-hand end behavior What's positive infinity to the fourth power? So that's still infinity. Okay, and I'll multiply by minus five. So that's, yeah. Same thing. So when X goes to positive infinity, Y or H of X still goes to negative infinity. In fact, our curve is going to look something like this. Notice that as I go to negative infinity on the x-axis, this thing heads down to negative infinity. As I go to positive infinity on the x-axis, the y value heads down to negative infinity. And this is why polynomials that are even degree polynomials like Cortex or quadratics, quadratics look like this. Their end behavior is the same. In other words, this end behavior is the same as that. That end behavior is the same as that. Same thing with cortex. Cubics are always the opposite. Cubic looks like this. So the end behavior on one side is in the opposite direction of the end behavior on the other. Now I could have a cubic that does this, but this end behavior game is really easy if you just do it the way I did it. 
And whatever you get in terms of a positive or a negative infinity is your answer. So let's do 18. What's the left-hand end behavior going to be? Um, so it's... Um, 7 times negative infinity to the 7th power. Do that part first. It's negative infinity. 7 times negative infinity. Okay. So the whole thing is negative infinity. Right. On the left. Now what about the right? In other words, let so, X go to positive infinity. It's, once again, oh wait. Um, yeah. So, still, oh wait, no, yeah, wait. No, hold on. no this is positive infinity. It's negative infinity. No, it's not negative infinity. Positive infinity to the seventh power is positive infinity. Seven times positive infinity is positive infinity. So the right-hand end behavior does that. So I have a graph that maybe does something like this, but the left-hand end behavior is negative infinity. The right-hand end behavior is positive infinity. Okay. really not much thinking needed here. What's the left hand end behavior? Um, so it's infinity or negative infinity because... Yeah, it's negative infinity, but I'd rather you fill it in so you don't... Because what happened is it just sounded like you guessed. You guessed one, and then, and then you guessed the other. So I don't know whether you know how to do it or not. Okay? So the way you should do it is just plug it in, and then simplify that. And simplify this part first, because the minus 2 is not being acted on by that exponent. Only the infinity is. So what does this thing become? Positive or negative infinity? Positive infinity. What's negative infinity to an even power become? Negative? Words, this part right here, just that part, what happens to that? Um, if I said it's... negative 2 to the fourth power, what would it be? A positive? Yeah. Uh... So that's positive. That's positive infinity. And now we're multiplying our positive infinity by the number minus 2. So what does that become? What's minus 2 times positive infinity? Negative infinity. <laughs> infinity. Answer. Now, let's go back. Plug in positive infinity instead of negative infinity. What's the inside become? What's positive infinity to the fourth power? Um, still positive infinity. And what's positive infinity times minus 2? Negative infinity. So both end behaviors are negative infinity. And notice they're both the same, which is what you expect whenever you have a polynomial that is an even power. This is a fourth degree polynomial. If I had a third degree polynomial, it would never be like this. In other words, the previous problem was a seventh degree polynomial. That means your end behaviors are opposite. One's at negative infinity, the other's at positive infinity. But they're not the same. They're always the same here. So when you see an even exponent, is all you have to do is figure out the left-hand end behavior, and you're done. The right-hand end behavior is the same. All right. Number 20. Which term do we care about? The... We care about all. 
Only one part is important. 5x to the fifth. Okay. Now, let's take 5x to the fifth and start plugging in our infinities. Tell me what to write next, and then after that, and then after that. So, to write uh, first is negative 5 times negative infinity to the fifth power. Which is, break it down piece by piece. What's the uh, so right it's here? It becomes oh uh, positive infinity, or negative negative infinity. Negative numbers to an odd power stay negative. If I said minus two to the third power, that's minus eight. If I said minus two to the fifth power, that's minus thirty-two. So if you have a negative number that you're taking to an odd power, it stays negative. And that applies to negative infinity also. So this whole part right here, I can replace with negative infinity. And now that is being multiplied by minus 5. What is the left-hand end behavior going to be? Infinity. What's the right-hand end behavior going to be? Negative infinity. Uh -huh. It's got to be opposite. Because it's an odd polynomial. It's an odd degree polynomial. It's a fifth degree power. If that's an odd, then the end behaviors are opposite one another. If you can figure out one of them, you know the other one. Okay. Okay. Let's see. That might not. We're doing this from a list, are we not? Yeah, here, I got to do this first. Yeah. So we're going to go through 22. Okay. Describe the degree and leading coefficient. Wow. The degree is easy enough. Yeah. It's five. On which one? 21. I think. I think it's five. Pretty sure it's five. You're probably right. First of all, we know it's odd, right? Because uh -huh. end behaviors are in different direction. So it's either 3 or 5. And we know this one is even because the end behavior is in the same direction. So let's work with 22 first, and I'll explain why. 20, 22 doesn't have any spots like this, okay? And that's kind of a unique spot. If you have a normal looking function, like 22, then the way you can figure out its degree is by counting up how many local extrema there are. There's one, there's another one, there's another one. And the degree is always one greater than that. So that's a fourth degree polynomial. Right. This one over here on the left, if I use that same rule, I would only see one, two. And I might say that that looks like a third degree polynomial. But you're actually right. If I take your that is y equal x cubed. So that is a third degree polynomial and it's got this spot right there where the slope of the tangent line is zero right there. In other words, that doesn't quite go, it kind of goes up like this and then goes over and then up again. Okay, it does the same thing that this does right there. 
And so when you see that, <clears throat> you know it probably has, well, this didn't have any extrema. And yet it was a third degree. Well, I knew it had to either be one, three, or five. And this one has to be one, three, or five. Well, it isn't one, and it's not three. Third degrees don't look like this. Third degrees, if it's not at the origin, would look like this, typically. That would be a cubic. Notice that the end behavior is opposite, and that it's got two extrema. One less than the fact that it's a cubic. Well, this has two extrema, <laughs> opposite end behavior, so might be a cubic, but probably is a fifth degree. I, I'm somewhat guessing because I'm still trying to figure out how they expect you to figure out the leading coefficient using the graph. Okay. Well, let's look at these two examples over here because they're showing us how to do it. I'm not sure I know how to do that. Let's see. They must show us how to do it. No, they're not going to tell us how to figure out that leading coefficient except maybe a 9 and 10. F is a polynomial. The degree is 3. The leading coefficient is 8, but if I was looking at a graph of that, I certainly wouldn't know that. And 10 doesn't help. 10 is actually not a polynomial. For something to be a polynomial, it has to have integer exponents that are positive. All of them. Number 10 has got a square root. That's x to the one-half. That's not an integer. So, okay. question remains is how do we determine the leading coefficient of those? For that matter, how do we determine whether that is a fifth degree or a third degree? I'm pretty sure it's a fifth degree also. Because third degrees don't look like that at the origin. Okay. Leading coefficients. Ah. How could we possibly know that from looking at that graph? Even if we knew that it was a vertical stretch or shrink factor, I'm not sure we could figure it out. Is there an example anywhere in this book that Shows you how to do a problem like this where they give you the graph and it tells you how to figure out what the degree is and the leading coefficient. I don't see uh, it in previous examples. And I doubt that it's in a previous section. I don't think so. Ah, hold on. We go. Maybe. Sketch it, graph. No. Use the graph to describe the degree and leading coefficient of F. Okay, let's see. Graph. So the degree is odd. And the leading coefficient is positive. Uh, maybe that's what they want. They just want a positive or a negative. I'll bet that's what they want.
Well, in three through eight, you can just read the leading coefficient. I, I don't know. I, I have not, to my recollection, seen a problem like this before, where you have to come up with the coefficient of the polynomial term. I suspect what they meant was the sign of the coefficient. Since we know that's a fifth degree, that, that's hard enough to come up with, the sign of the coefficient. Okay, let's do the easy one, 22 first. All right. If we know that 22 is a fourth degree, and we have a lot of evidence that it's fourth degree because there's three extremas, and there's nothing going through the origin that has a flat slope of the tangent line. So we know that it's x to the fourth. Is the coefficient positive or negative? Uh, positive. That's all I know. I don't know if it's positive 2 or positive 3 or positive 10. I don't know how to tell. But I can tell that it's positive. And that might be what they mean. Describe the degree and leading coefficient. Their answer, do you have answers for these? No. Because if you could look up the answer to the odd one, at least we would find out what they're looking for. I don't know how to put a number on that. I do know how to put a sign on it, and it's plus. Now let's look at this one and assume that it's either third degree or fifth degree. It's not going to matter in terms of the sign of the coefficient. Let's assume it's fifth degree. What okay. does the sign have to be? Uh, negative. Correct. Because I know that as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to positive infinity. So the result of that has to be positive infinity. And if I do a negative, negative infinity to the fifth power, I end up with positive infinity. So the end behavior matches a negative coefficient. And like I said, it doesn't really matter whether it's to the third degree or the fifth degree. I'm 95% positive this is fifth degree. I, I can't ever remember seeing a cubic function that looks like that. Those extra humps, in other words, there's actually two extra humps kind of hidden by that. You wouldn't necessarily see the humps, but they're, that's, you can act like they're there. In other words, if I plot y equal x cubed, Right where it goes through the origin, I can assume there's two humps there. And that would give me a cubic. And so if I assume there's two humps there, that gives me a, a fifth degree. I've got four relative extrema, and that's x to the fifth. All right. All right. 33 to 40. Okay, 33. Give me the answer in interval notation, I guess. Where is the function increasing? What interval? Um, or is we're answering this for 33? We'll start with the increase. So increasing is at from or from positive four. Um, and forward, so uh, to infinity. In other words, if I go on the x-axis from 4 yeah. to the right, it's always increasing. Never does it turn around and go back the other way. In other words, that goes that way forever. So, where is it decreasing? 
from four to negative infinity. Always start from the left. Negative infinity. Oh, negative infinity. Yeah. So that's for 33. About 34. Okay. I need you to get right. Or is it increasing? Uh, from, uh, it's, oh, from, ne er, yeah, negative infinity to negative four. And decreasing? Um, from negative four to infinity. Yeah, and these are always parentheses, never brackets, because notice on this, what is it doing exactly at negative four? It's neither increasing nor decreasing. So I can't have a bracket next to the negative four. That would indicate that it's increasing at negative four also, and it isn't. It's doing neither one at negative four. Let's take 35. Wait, so what was C? Like, what do we do for C? Oh, excuse me. I, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, let's answer B also. Where is the function greater than zero? Um, so for 33, mm -hmm. it's greater than zero at... Um, what intervals? There's two of them. So, uh, negative infinity to three. Good. One. So it's positive from negative infinity to three. Where else? In union with. About this part. So, uh, from five to infinity. Uh huh. How about negative? That was where it was positive. Where is it negative? From uh, three to five. Yeah, again, always parentheses, because at the edges, it's zero. It's neither positive nor negative. Okay, about 34, where is it positive? So, um, it's positive from negative 5 to 3. It's negative 6. A negative oh, two. Oh, that's negative six. Okay. Right. Where's yeah. the negative? Um, from negative infinity to negative six, and then from uh negative two to infinity. To negative. Or oh, excuse me. You, no, you're absolutely correct. It's a positive infinity. Okay. Okay, now let's look at 35. Okay. And 35, well, yeah, we might as well answer an in interval notation also. Let's just go through them. Increasing where? So it increases from negative infinity to, uh, what is that, four? Remember, you're always giving the x values. Oh, so zero. Not always, but on these problems, where they want you to give an interval notation is always given based on the x values, never the y value. Now, on 34, if they said, where is the maximum, the answer would be at four. The maximum is four, not where is the maximum, what is the maximum, it would be four. 
And if they said, what is the minimum on 33, the answer would be negative 6. So if they say, what is the minimum or maximum, you give the y value. If they say, where does it occur, you give the x value. Just like uh, these intervals are all given in terms of the x value. Where else is, is it increasing? It's not just increasing from negative infinity to zero. Okay. 35. So, um, also, oh, for our, so increasing also from uh, two to infinity? Okay, where is it decreasing? Um, from zero to two. Okay, where is it positive? Um, so uh, it's positive from uh, what? Or negative one to infinity. Actually, it's not positive right there. Zero. Oh, to zero. Yes. No, it's got to, you got to make your interval go from minus one to two in combination with, That's zero. with two to infinity. Notice that 2 is not part of our solution set. At x equal 2, it is not positive. It's 0. Okay. Okay. Where is it negative? Uh, it's negative at, um, from negative 1. Negative to infinity. Ne always start at negative infinity. Right. 2 negative 1. Okay. In other words, always go left to right and bottom to top when you're defining these things or even looking at them. All right, and that's all they wanted on all of it was uh, those four things on each of these graphs. So let's do the four things on 36 or, yeah, let's do 36. Okay. Increasing. Uh, so it increases from. Hold uh, on a second. I got to put it in the picture, I guess. Otherwise, you can't read it. Okay. Now. All right. So yeah, from negative infinity. And then to negative one, I think that is, or uh huh, yeah, negative one. Where else? And then from one to infinity. Okay, decreasing. So from negative one. Two, one. Positive. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, from two to infinity and negative. Uh, so that's from infinity to oh. negative. Remember, you negative. Go left to right, negative infinity. Okay? Right. To uh, negative one. Okay. And then, is it negative one to one? Okay. Negative one to two. That point right there is two. In other words, it's negative to there, and then it's negative. All there. 
Remember, okay. you're defining it based on the X coordinates. Okay. Okay. Have a look at another one. Uh, 33 through 40. So we need 37. Hmm. Uh, yeah, they must mean the sign of the leading coefficient. Because that's the only thing you can really describe from the appearance of the graph. You can't figure out whether the leading coefficient is 2, 3, 4, or 5, but you can figure out whether it's positive or negative. Oh, wait. Okay, so sketch a graph given the characteristics. Um, let's see if I can. Well, we can do 37. So, they said when x is greater than one-half, the graph is increasing. There's one part sketched. f is decreasing when x is less than one-half. What's the other part I have to sketch? That's the uh, way it can be decreasing. So. Now, it says it is a function, so I don't want to make that a corner or a cusp. That's a nice rounded edge. What are we looking at? Um, what degree? A second degree? Yeah, quadratic. Just so, because yeah. it's a parabola. So it's second degree, and, well, I didn't look at the second part of it. I guess I... Just two different questions, or do both of these apply? Oh, oh, it is two different questions. No, I mean, it's the same question. Okay. Notice that even if I was operating only on that information, I could have drawn this graph like this, right? Right. Same thing, still increasing on that same interval and still decreasing on that same interval. So the second part does help because it tells me that it's positive when x is less than 2 and x is greater than 3. Well, if I put, if I use the second graph that I drew, which is actually pretty reasonable approximation of the graph, I believe, we know it's positive when x is less than 2. That's the way I've drawn it. And it's also positive when x is greater than 3. That's the way I've drawn it. And it's negative when x is between minus 2 and 3. There's a perfect graph. Now, I might be able to put numbers on that or come close. I could say that it's certainly a positive coefficient. So I could say x squared minus... 3. That parabola that I've got in there could easily be x squared minus 3. Notice I can figure out the sign on the coefficient, but I can't figure out the number. I don't have any way to figure out the number. Hmm. Maybe I do. Maybe I do. There is actually a way that I can figure out the number. Oh, yeah. Um, and I'd want to use x-intercept format. In other words, if I use x-intercept format, that's this format, x minus p times x minus q, right? And I can see the x-intercepts. 
So I've got a times x plus 2 times x minus 3. There's the equation. Unfortunately, I can't really figure out a, or can I? I know. No, I can't. Cannot figure out a. I'll tell you why. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, because it could look like this. In other words, all of these conditions are also met by this parabola. It has a different A. has the same x-intercepts, same decreasing intervals, same increasing intervals, same positive places, same negative places. So from this information that they gave us, I can draw either this or this. They both have different A's. Right. The only thing that's the same is the sign of the coefficient. And it's positive. I'm really kind of disappointed in them here. The, they ask you what the leading coefficient is instead of what is the sign of the leading coefficient. Or is the leading coefficient positive or negative? They don't say that. Ah, see example five. How far back do I have to go to see example five? Is it even going to be in this section? Do I have any way of knowing where example five is? Um, it should be ah, there. There's example six. Here's an example four. Example five must be right there. Okay. Notice their answer. The degree is odd and the leading coefficient is positive. They don't tell you what number it is. They just say whether it's positive or negative, which is what I've been saying. Uh, That's the way it has to be. There's no way. And I just proved it by being able to draw two different parabolas that have two different leading coefficients. All right, that was 37. Now we got to do 38. So the easiest way to do these is, I think, the way I did them, which is just start drawing based on the information you have. In other words, you know, let me use this color. So it's increasing from minus 2 to 3. So we can certainly put some key numbers on there. Before I draw anything, let me look at the rest of it. And it's decreasing when x is less than minus 2 and also when x is greater than 3. Hi. So it's increasing on this interval, but decreasing there and there. So it's that kind of a function. What, what is that? What degree is that? Uh, three. Correct. The only uh, thing I don't know is where it goes vertically. In other words, I could make that function look like this, and it would have exactly the same increasing and decreasing places. Right? Yeah. So where I have to do is move it up and down. I've got the shape of it. 
I got to move it up and down so that it matches this part. Well, it's greater than zero when we're to the left of negative four. That point must be negative four. It's end when x is between one and five. Well, there's a perfect one and five. And it's positive in whenever x is less than negative four, it's positive. Whenever x is between one and five, it's positive. And it's negative whenever x is between minus 4 and 1, like my graph shows. And it's negative, or whenever x is greater than 5, it's negative. So my blue line expresses that perfectly. Okay. Oddly enough, because I drew it completely out of random. In other words, it didn't have to, I didn't have to move it down could also have moved it up. It could have been something that looked like this. Both times I've done it, I've moved it down, and it happened to be in the perfect spot each time, <laughs> which is completely uh, accidental. I had no idea. Uh, in other words, when you draw these, um, you don't know whether it's going to be up or down from where the original stuff says, okay? okay? So if F is increasing between minus two and zero, so F's doing that, and it's also wherever X is greater than plus two, it's increasing, so it's doing something like that. And F is decreasing whenever X is less than minus 2. That works. And whenever X is between 0 and 2, it's decreasing. Well, how about... No, it's got to be decreasing the whole way between 0 and 2. So I must have something that looks like this. Ah, it could look like this. This makes a little bit more sense. If it's increasing from minus, from minus 2 to 0, and then it's decreasing from 0 to minus 2. So that would work, right? And I can yeah. even draw smooth edges here. I don't particularly want cusps or corners. And that's a calculus thing. Uh, function is not differentiable at a cusp or a corner. And there's a very precise mathematical definition of cusps and corners. And they haven't really given it to us. So at this point is all I've done is graphed that part of it. And my graph fits that part. If you look at those intervals, I'm doing exactly what it says I'm supposed to be doing in each of those intervals. However, I know the graph can be moved up or down. Well, it tells me that x, or y rather, f of x, is greater than 0 when x is less than minus 3. Again, I'm going to have to move my graph which way? Um, down. Notice why. Remember, it's got to be exactly the same shape. But that's minus 3. And it's telling me that y is greater than 0 when x is less than minus 3. So I know that it has to cross the zero point at minus three. It's also negative between minus one, or excuse me, it's positive between minus one. That means that must go all the way down to there, and then turn around. In fact, 
It's positive between minus 1 and 1. So that must be minus 1. I may have to redraw this blue line as a, let me pick a better color here, a green line. And I know that around here, it's got to look like this. In other words, it's only positive between 1 and minus 1. So, how about this? And then it's negative when x is between minus 3 and minus 1, which my green line is. And it's also negative between 1 and 3. Okay. Now, my green line should satisfy everything we see there. In other words, it's a, satisfy that and satisfy that. I think it does. It's positive between whenever x is less than 3, so that's true, the green line is. Also positive between minus 1 and plus 1, the green line is. And it's positive when x is greater than 3, the green line is. And it's negative when x is between minus 3 and minus 1. From there to there, it's negative. It's also negative between 1 and 3, negative there. So that green curve is a perfect Matches all of this. Okay. What degree is it? Uh, four. And what is the sign of the leading coefficient? Uh, positive. Correct. Because we know it's got to be x to the fourth power, and that m behavior goes to positive infinity, so that's got to be a plus, can't be a minus. Okay. Okay, let's see if we can do one more here. I was looking at 41 just to see if we wanted to do it, maybe. Um, part of the problem here is that I have to do the graphing, so it's difficult for you to tell me how to graph it, and yet that's really what you need to be able to do. Um, so these do not work quite as well online as they would if we were in person. These are some of the few problems that are like that in math, is where you're supposed to graph it. Uh, and it's even hard for you to describe how to graph it. Right. Okay. Okay. So I'm inclined to think let's go to a problem with our last five minutes that I can actually ask you questions on. Um, here, let me, uh, let me bring up that other thing again. We're so, supposed to do, oh, we were only supposed to do through 40. Okay, we didn't do 40, but... I think you get the idea how to do 40, don't you? Yeah. And 48. Let's see what 48 looks like. Yeah, we can do 48 in five minutes. The graph of the function is shown. Describe the degree and leading coefficients. What degree? Um, the degree is 3. Okay. So we know it's x to the third. Then... What's the leading coefficient, plus or minus? Uh, plus. Correct. Because I know that when I plug in negative infinity there, I better end up with negative infinity. And the only way I do that is with a plus sign there. Describe the intervals where the function is increasing. Uh, 
so from uh, negative infinity. Oh, wait, increasing? Uh-huh. Oh, oops. Uh, yeah, well, so negative infinity. And decreasing. We're going to start with the increase. Okay, so, yeah, negative infinity to, one sec. And then to um, negative three. Okay, where else? Uh, then uh, from negative three. Oh wait, no, that's decreasing. Um, negative one up to infinity. Not, not up to, over to. In other words, you're not going up. You're going this direction when you're listing that interval. All right. So yeah. So over so to. You're correct. It's minus one to infinity. And where's it decreasing? From uh, uh, negative three to negative one. Okay. Finally, we haven't answered one of these yet. What's the constant on this polynomial? Constant. Uh -huh. This is something you can figure out by looking at the graph. The constant's the y-intercept. Oh, so four? Uh-huh. It could be anything in between here. In other words, it could be that, it could be that, but that constant's got to be 4. Why? Because the constant is what you end up with when you substitute 0 for x. And when I substitute 0 for x, which is what my x is when I'm on the y-intercept, it makes all of those go away, and I'm left with 4. So your constant term is always your y-intercept. Okay. Demetrius, I'll talk to you next time. Okay, thanks.